Okay, so this is probably one of the most, if not the most famous ichthyosaur fossil in the world. This is the first ichthyosaur um, discovered and described by scientists. Um, and it was found by uh, Mary Anning and her brother Joseph when they were children, so around 11, 12 years old in the early 1800s. Um, and it really marked the beginning of Mary Anning's career, because of course she went on to discover many other firsts in this country, the first plesiosaur ever described by science, the first flying reptile outside of Germany, so dimorphodon, lots of different species of fish, um, and of course her well-developed relationship with the science, her own theories, her working with the scientists of the day, all of that started with this specimen. And one of the reasons I think it's really special coming here to see these things is that we talk about Mary Anning on the coast a lot, uh, and of course her story is cherished because she was a local, she grew up in Lyme Regis, she's one of the first and greatest collectors that ever lived, contributing to the science and, and, and marking the Jurassic Coast as one of the birthplaces of paleontology. But, you know, you look at these specimens and scientifically they're remarkable, but this woman that lived nearly 200 years ago, she physically held this, she touched this. She had a physical, intellectual and emotional relationship with this object in this case, which I am only a few centimetres from. And that's really quite electric. I mean, we want to try and connect with these people of the past, these people that brought alive Earth history for us to enjoy. And, you know, that, those vibrations are still here, I believe. You know, they're still in these objects, that human connection to our ancestors, but also to that deep history of the world.